Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, some of you know that, 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 that um, uh, I take a great deal of interest in uh, the UK and its growth prospects and its businesses and its entrepreneurs. I'm convinced that uh, the UK is a, a very good um, breeding ground for entrepreneurs. We have a huge range of possibilities. Now, in some cases in the United States, you find them in small pockets uh, uh, around uh, the United States. But in the UK, this is something that is done across uh, the piece. It's done up and down the country uh, and um, in uh, the devolved uh, countries as well. If we are going to encourage this, we're going to have to find ways of skilling young people in order for them to be given the opportunities. And so I see it as a very, very important task for me and for other people um, who are partners uh, with me in order to create the conditions for young people to be not only <coughs> digitally skilled, but also employably skilled rather than just purely educated. And it's this leap of culture in some respects from just simply being well educated to being uh, given the skills and given the opportunities. Now if we take idea, which is why I'm here today, talking to you about how we inspire young people to consider the digital world as their next uh, adventure in the world of business. How do we inspire them? How do we create the next digital entrepreneur? I'm not sure that the next digital entrepreneur will necessarily come from Imperial or Oxford or Cambridge or Durham or Edinburgh or Cardiff. I think they're going to come from somewhere other than that. And these are young people who perhaps haven't had the same opportunities that the likes of us in this room have had. And I want to inspire young people from all sides of the educational either divide or group to think about how they can be a part of this digital future. So IDEA is about to inspire young people to get digitally skilled so that they can not only be employed within the digital, digital world, but also be employers of the future in the digital world. Now, in order to do that, we're going to take a huge risk. Um, I like risk. I was a sailor. I was an aviator. So I understand that sort of risk. This is a different type of risk. This is a risk that says, OK, if these young people are going to need it, we're going to try and find and bring together a group of partners who can help me deliver this across the UK. We have a few partners and we're out looking actively for more partners to come in and help us be able to do this. So if you or any of your colleagues and friends have ideas, not the same idea as idea, but ideas, then we are uh, listening and we are very keen to hear from you about ways of being able to make this a reality. Now it's something that, that I think is uh, right and proper for a member of the royal family to lead, but I couldn't do it without the help of Nominet Trust, who are, um, uh, as many of you know, uh, in this field of trying to enable digital enterprise. So with Nominet, we are working very closely. And um, I came across um, uh, Will I Am a number of uh, years ago uh, in, in a completely different environment. But I recently went to see what he's trying to do in parts of Los Angeles. And he's got a something along the same lines as to that which we are um, trying to encourage. And so I brought him into this for the simple reason that he sees how technology can make a difference to young people. So if you've got an idea or somebody who wishes to be a partner, then I'm listening. It's a great pleasure to see you all today. And I think we're now going to have a session where Michael is going to um, put one or two of us through our paces. Yes, sir. Well, just over here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you very much.
could we welcome on stage Anika Small, CEO of the Nominate Trust, uh, which backs the project, um, and also Catherine Parsons, the founder of Decoded. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our, our fellow guests. <laughs> So perhaps we just start with you in terms of in terms of idea. Um, what what sort of um, why do it? What, what what was the impetus to actually sort of take a project like this and get it started? Life could be easier, I guess. Well, if you if you just sat still and did nothing, we wouldn't get anywhere. Oh. Um, I spend a lot of time working with um, Her Majesty's government, and uh, in many cases, um, uh, their uh, uh, view to to some extent is. Yes, you get on and do it, and we will follow you, uh, rather than necessarily them wanting to try and start something. That's the institution of government, which I deal with on a, on, on, on a daily basis. But actually, if we don't do something, then I think that we are um, uh, not creating the conditions whereby the future prosperity of this country is placed at some risk. If the digital economy, if the science and the engineering world um, which I hear is going to need so many more jobs coming up. We're going to have to skill these young people. And so therefore, it is just a simple case of let's give them the opportunity. And, 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 and at the end of the, the day, you have no idea how many of these are going to turn into a business. I don't really mind. I, I just want to get these young people active in, 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 in the space. And do you get a sense of their potential, their enthusiasm potentially for this task? Is it, is it, a, is it an open market, do you think? Um, well, certainly from what I can tell, uh, in talking to, to, to uh, Nominate Trust and others, um, we're having difficulty already in limiting the numbers down to the thousand that we want to do for the first uh, few months to get our teeth around okay. what it is that we're doing. Um, and, and, and the more partners that we bring on board, the more people we are going to be able to skill. Um, there are three levels, as, 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 as there are to, uh, to, to many things, and I make uh, no apology for stealing from the Duke of Edinburgh's award. Right. Um, <laughs> the, the, the idea is that, that, that um, uh, well, the best, I mean, you know, copying is the best form of flattery. Um, and so, uh, uh, but we've called them uh, awards uh, we've called them uh, Discovery, Beta, and Live Awards rather than Bronze, Silver, and Gold. Um, there are two that are of, of a fixed standard, and then the third one is slightly more flexible because what we want to do is not only skill them, but we want to take them through the process. And perhaps <clears throat> some of them may well start a digital business. Right. Well, I mean, Anika, maybe you can sort of update us in terms of actually how that process works. And indeed, we talked about the kind of bootstrapping young entrepreneurs that you're trying to appeal to. Give a sense of how's it going and how will it go in terms of attracting them? I think, I mean, what we're seeing is just the phenomenal opportunity that thanks to technology, the world is no longer linear. You don't necessarily need to go from school to college to getting a job, and young people are, are getting that. They, they're grabbing those opportunities. they seeing that they're free tools to create their own games and apps and sell them. And so you've got Nick Delazio, you've got Ryan I. Orbach, who's 16, as top of the charts of, of the Apple Store. So the opportunities are there, and, but they're perhaps not open, as, as the Duke says, to, oh. to as many people. And what we're finding Finding through this call of idea that we're opening the door to those who perhaps otherwise wouldn't have had that chance. And, and for, for the sort of entrepreneurs that are here, I and mean, there's many established high growth entrepreneurs in the audience that might want to get involved, might want to give back, what's that, I mean, how, how does that happen? How do they get involved? There are a couple of things that, um, to your point about the, the lean bootstrapping, what we want to do is encourage young people to just get stuck in, get, get going. And what we need for that is mentors, we need business placements, we need actually those technology companies to open up their tools so that kids can get coding quickly and develop those games. So, but also there is an element of financial support required, particularly those for, uh, who are in, in more challenging circumstances. But what we're finding, I mean, the recent study that um, UK businesses need for 745,000 more digitally skilled workers in the next three years if they're to flourish, well, idea is actually training your, your workforce, your future workforce. Right. So there is a tremendous opportunity for, for industry to get behind this. Okay, so, so next door, Catherine, we've got a a brief snapshot of, of, of indeed some of the skills that idea will deliver but in this case coding give us a sense of first of all what's going on next door but then maybe build out a little bit in terms of actually what's going on in the UK at large well we're very excited to be teaching the gazelle group of students next door and actually 
uh, what we're teaching them and I'll let you know in a minute. A great buzz, uh, lots of ideas. We've had a brilliant shop window at Decoded into business, small and large, and how desperately they're looking for digital innovation, skills, literacy, entrepreneurship, and um, how much uh, they're, they're seeking those skills for their future um, workforce. <clears throat> so it's incredible to be bringing that to, to young students who want to maybe create their own businesses or be part of a kind of thriving future digital economy. I suppose, so with the, the thing about idea is going to hone skills that can really sort of help with the issue of attrition because obviously failure is a big part of the entrepreneurial experience as well, especially when it's young businesses. I mean, will they can't they succeed unless you fail first. Right. You have to go through that period of failure or at least a setback. And so if, unless, you, unless you've got the experience of failure, you, you, I mean, you just have to get that somehow. Um, and, 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 and it's how you do that in a way that allows people to apply that failure in a positive way. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're ta you talked about in, in your speech about you know that, that these future entrepreneurs aren't necessarily going to come from the kind of you know gleaming sort of universities, but potentially from some quite tough streets. So, do they are these kind of young people that are going to have a certain amount of life's hard knocks sort of already? There. And does it make them better in terms of potential students on this course? I don't think it makes any difference where you come from, but 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 I actually think that, that there, there is a there is a narrowing of the gap, and we've got to open that 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 pipeline <laughs> up. If you look at traditional business today, it is becoming more and more efficient. More and more efficient means it's using more and more technology. More and more technology actually means fewer people per employment. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we're going to have to create new businesses, so that's creating entrepreneurs in order to be able to give that employment to those people. And it's, it's, a, it's a virtuous circle, but then in amongst that we are an experience-based learning organism. Let's see if we can give people the experiences that they require at an early age so that they can be successful entrepreneurs in the future. And if you can do failure in a controlled way, I mean, when I was at school, I, I, one of the tenets of, of, of the school that I was at was that a challenge should be set a student where the logical outcome would be failure. Okay. So, allied to that, how big an issue do you think any confidence is going to be in terms of the, the, the people that actually take up idea? I mean, are, have we got sort of uber confident young people or actually is this part about building up that confidence level? It's absolutely about building up that level. I think um, what idea is trying to do is create a safe space in which to, to try things out and, and what better teacher than enterprise itself? Just give it a try and um, again back to this lean, bootstrapping, agile, iterative, give it a try, it doesn't work. What you're doing is build, building a digital prototype, you test it with your customers, you go back, you get that feedback, and all that whole process is building confidence. And absolutely, some, some young people will emerge and be the digital entrepreneurs of the future, but even those who don't, who go on to be employees, will have built so many different skills. And, and, and is there an upswing in appetite, do you think, among young people? I mean, do, do people want to be entrepreneurs? I mean, it's sort of, obviously, yeah. it's had a bit of an image makeover, mainly because of many of the people in this room, I guess. Yeah. But actually, the idea of actually people wanting to be entrepreneurs in that 16 to 24 age group. We, um, uh, to launch IDEA, commissioned some research, and 55% of young people want to set up their own business. Actually, only 14% are. So IDEA is absolutely looking at that, that gap. How that can gap. we reduce that gap? And what, and what stops them at the moment, do you think, in terms of that gap? I think it, it's partly confidence, but it's partly some of the schemes that are available seem quite daunting. It's sort of take on a £20,000 loan and, and young people perhaps aren't equipped or don't feel that that's right for them. And I, right. I think there's also a self-image. Am I an entrepreneur? Does, do I look like an entrepreneur? Is that who I am? Right. But, but trying to just knock down some of those barriers is going to be so important. So, so Catherine, obviously part of your job spec is you, you jet set around the world. You're seeing young people helping them with coding skills. Give us a sense of this in a global context. I mean, how ambitious is a place? We're going to talk about entrepreneurial culture next, actually. But how ambitious do you get a sense of actually the Britain's young, Britain's young potential entrepreneurs and our culture in, say, against the, 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 the countries you visit? 
Well, I think it's been such an exciting journey in, in the last kind of four or five years uh, in the UK. I mean, you know, I, I set up uh, my own business and uh, the, the first one kind of in 2007. And just to see um, how those hubs of uh, creativity and innovation and investment and signposting to uh, places you can go for advice and support is utterly different to where it was three years ago. And uh, which is why I absolutely love when initiatives come around that, that give people People are kind of shining light of where they can go if they have an idea. So give us a sense of the gap in terms of digital skills that, that this sort of initiative can help sort of bridge. I mean, what, what are we missing in the UK more, more generally, do you think? Well, I love this, uh, this feeling of, and actually the whole reason why we, we exist actually is we came from quite a creative background. And, uh, you know, we loved having ideas and actually the ability to kind of make those ideas happen was just becoming, you were becoming more and more divorced from it. Um, you know, the new kind of uh, toolkit or pen and paper, you know, it felt like they, they'd fallen out of your hands. So if you're young and you have an idea, and it, it, it doesn't matter if that idea needs to change, you know, 17, 20 times to, to get there. The, the kind of the feeling of being able to actually realize it and craft it and create it yourself is so incredibly powerful um, that um, and, and actually being able to you know the investment needed to do that is, is a lot less than let's say a bricks and mortar business mm. as well I mean you're meeting young entrepreneurs all over the country so I mean are there any I mean if, if you want to share maybe a story about sort of people that you're meeting that are inspiring you perhaps well I, I have a, I mean I treat every day as a, as, as a day at university because I learn something new every single time I go visiting uh, either businesses or entrepreneurs or sc schools and colleges. And it's really encouraging. I, I mean, I, I have to say that I have not yet met a young person who is not uh, looking towards employment. Right. I don't see a lazy young person out there. I don't see someone, I don't, well, perhaps I'm only meeting them, uh, certain people, but um, I just don't get it. I just I get the feeling that this country wants these young people today either they want to work they want to be employed or they want to start their own business. And are they doing that with a sense of optimism or is there a kind of fear of where will the job come or is there more of a sense of I can get that job do you think? Um, I think they're finding it very difficult to see between the lines as to where the jobs are and what they're looking for and there is a slight mismatch I'm getting a sense there's a slight mismatch between the jobs that are available and the jobs that are needed to those that are either being trained for or educated for in the system. Right. Now, Anik, you've obviously you, you represent a very large company, or, or certainly the charitable trust end of a large company. Um, why have you got involved in, in this sort of project? And in terms of if you were to give a message to sort of fellow corporates in the room, what do you think that is in terms of kind of citizenship responsibilities in this particular instance? It, it's it's our future. It's absolutely critical that we support young people and create the opportunities for them. And I, um, I, I think that just has to be the responsibility of, of corporates in in this country. And that uh, your your point about um, are they finding the jobs? Well, I th I sense there's an appetite for not just finding the jobs but creating the jobs. And I think from from Nominet Nominet Trust perspective, it's our responsibility to equip them to do that. And I. I'm afraid there is just a tremendous disconnect between the curriculum that's currently being taught mm. and what the skills that are needed. Most of the people in this room have gone on and done it and not been interested in whether or not things are right or wrong. And I think that we have to do it for the same reasons, which is that if we just get on and do it, people will come and support. And businesses understand that. They've got to get up and go. We've got to be looking more positively. Mm. And the scale and scape of this initiative is huge, right? A million young people. I mean, it's going to be a major sort of um, part of the enterprise landscape. Does that, does that daunt you, Sarah? Do you think that you're ready to do it? Is Britain ready to do it? Um, or is it um, Anika's for... Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is where the fingers point. Is, is this what they call line management, sir? <laughs> <laughs> um, a million um, was just a figure that was plucked out of the sky. Um, based on the fact that I think that that's the sort of figure that we're going to need. If you start looking at the number of engineers we're going to need, you look at the number of digitally skilled people, we are going to need to, to at least exceed that. And this million is over five years. It's not this year or next year, it is over, it is over five years. Um, and I think that, that um, 
the risk that we are taking is that actually the more, the more partners we bring on, the more ability we have to be able to offer this training and this, this mentoring, um, and the more badges that we have from the technology companies, uh, the more we have, then I think we may exceed that number, which is, which is actually our concern, is that, is, the, is that we might have to, we might be exceeding it, especially with the take up that we've had so far. Right. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to leave it there, but could you show a great deal of appreciation to His Royal Highness the Duke of York and our wonderful panel? Thank you very much indeed. Uh